meeting of Quilt Tribe. I can't believe the whole year is, is done. But we learned a lot. I think we learned a lot. So we're going to learn some more tonight. And um, I'm going to show you the quilts done in both 6, 9, and 12 inch sizes. Is kind of give you a review and inspire you. Even though you made one side, let's do another size, OK? So do you want to help me hold? Sure. OK, so this is the one that you see on the cover of your pattern. But I always think that they look nicer in person, right? Oh. Yeah, so this is a six inch one, and this actually has 35 blocks in it. But the way that I set up your yardage charts, I set it up for lap size, both in, in six, nine, and 12 inch blocks, and then I set it in a queen size in six, nine, and 12. And they're approximately the same size quilts. It's just obviously when we get to the 12 inch, you need a lot less blocks for your quilt. So this was the first one that I did. And um, so I was just like playing around, but I really like it. You can recognize a lot of the blocks, I think. I used a lot of cotton and steel in this one. I'm a huge cotton and steel fan, and I like it because they have a lot of like little fussy cuts and things in it. So it's a little horse. I'm really, I'm really um, fond of these horses after what the poor horses went through last weekend. Yeah. I always have liked horses from a distance. I mean, I didn't really ever want to get on a horse. So, but. I went on my, co my cousin was a barrel racer, oh. and so she thought I should get on her horse. You know, horses are really smart. They know if you don't yeah. have a clue what you're doing. That horse literally ran up to the fence and put me over the fence. That's the last time <laughs> I was on it. Just like a cartoon. And there I go. It was. It was. Okay, so here's an example of the nine inch. Oh. So that, and that's what I'm going to be sewing on tonight as well, just putting together a nine inch one. And this was like a, a fabric packet that I had of coordinating fat quarters. So that kind of helps in your decision making, right? Okay, mm -hmm. here's my eight things. Did Amy quilt these? Um, this is probably a Judy Jackson. Oh. Amy quilted the first one. I like that quilt. Yeah, it's really fun. And then here is, you can just plop them down, Claudia. And here's. Ooh. I know, I had to show that for you. <laughs> so anyway, so here's the 12 inch blocks. So if you're in kind of a more of a hurry, <laughs> 12's the way to go. <laughs> you can make your favorite ones. I know, you can always make your favorite ones. Or you know, a lot of these yeah. blocks you can do like one block repeats and just put them all in the same quilt, right? Mm -hmm. So it's another option you have. All right, so tonight what I want to do is I'm going to actually show you how to sew the framing border onto your block and then how to square that up. And then we're going to go on how to do the layout with the piece sashing, OK? So when we do these blocks, um, you know, we hope that they're all going to be the same size, but I can guarantee you they're probably not. I know mine weren't, so don't feel bad at all. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a framing border on two opposite sides. Now these framing borders are a little bit bigger than your block. Um, after we sew it, we're going to trim it off, and then we're going to go back and sew the top and bottom. Okay? Um, I like to keep it. You know how when you're making a quilt, you sew your side borders on first, and then your top and bottom. I kind of do the same thing when I do these blocks as well. I don't really know if it makes any difference, but it seems like a good logical thing to do. So. Um, if you have a fabric that has a directional fabric, like I have some birds I'm going to show you later, it's obviously an up and down thing. I always try and keep that same way so my quilt looks more consistent when it's sewn together. Okay? I'm so excited. I get to sew. I haven't been sewing <laughs> for you guys. Well, I've been sewing a lot. Trust me, I've been sewing a lot. But I mean, the finger sewing, right? Okay. So you're just going to. Sew a framing border to both sides. And I like to sew with my framing, framing border fabric, say that five times fast, um, next to my feed dogs. And the reason being is, is that um, I want to be able to see the way that I press the seams within my block. If you put them down below and you're framing on top, these are going to flip back, you know. You think you try to do it, but they always flip back on you. So. Um, when you're looking at your framing border, can you see how I have excess okay, on both sides? So I wanna, I'm going to start 
Oh, actually, I'm going to start at this end. Start at this end, and I'm going to try and get that pretty flush to here because the feed dogs will have a tendency to move more of your framing border through the machine faster than it will your peach block. So that's why I, this, you have this extra down so you're not like an eighth of an inch short when you get to the other side. It's like the engineering of the, all this, right? Okay, and I'm just sewing, I always sew with a um, scant quarter inch, so my machine's set at 4.0. And I always like to sew with um, 15 stitches to the inch, or um, let's see, yeah, like 2.0 on your computerized sewing machine, whichever kind you do. I'm looking around, I'll go, oh, I have my scissors, I hope. I had to think of different things to uh, make sure I had on my table when I'm sewing. Now, I would just assembly line sew probably like four blocks at a time. If you get too many blocks, they're going to start all winding up on you when you go to do the other side. But since I'm just doing one, I always have these little um, jumper fabrics, I call them. And that way, my a needle does not become unthreaded. And I also don't waste too much thread, you know what I mean, between, because you don't get those little tails. Okay, so I have this side on, so now I'm going to add the other side on, doing the exact same thing. And I have to laugh at some of these blocks, because I sewed them with red thread, mm -hmm. and um, when I, if I steam them, they kind of like ran into my blocks. So all my blocks I kind of have a red tint to them. <laughs> And I thought it was just this one brand of thread. Um, I didn't think it was with the Mettler thread, but I get maybe it's just something to do with the dye lot or something. I have a little pivot feature on this machine. I just engaged, so every time I stop, you can see how the foot goes up, and that helps get your fabric to lay flat, too. Okay, so I'll get my little... I know, I'm really excited to go finish this quilt. I have 24 blocks. Remember when I switched halfway through and I went to the 9 inch? Okay, so what I'm going to do when I'm over at the pressing mat, I'm going to put my framing border on top, and I'm just going to set my seams into my fabric. Maybe give it a little steam, not full-blown steam, so they get good and sunk in there. And then I'll press this open, and you want to be really careful that you don't get little pleats. Okay. I thought you were telling me to do something, now, Ryan. <laughs> I'm going, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> it's okay. We're lucky enough to have Kylie and Zoe join us tonight. Huh, Zoe? You should come way by and say hi to the people. Okay, so I have just little bits of ends that I'm just going to trim off. So I'm just going to take the 4 by 14 works great for this size. So I'm just going to trim off one side and trim off the other side. And I would avoid cutting off any of your block. Trim just your framing, OK? Because you're going to take care of any unevenness here when you sew the other two. When you start getting into your block, you can start to get wonky blocks, OK? So I'm going to do the same for the other. And I know this because I made those three quilts that we just saw. And <laughs> you can see what happens if I start playing around. Um, another trick that you can do, OK, so I'm lining this up. but can you see this line right here on my ruler? I'll scoot it a little bit. I keep that right even to that seam that I just placed. And that really helps me get a good perspective so I don't like cut like that. OK? I always do that, especially when I'm putting on borders and things like that. I find it really helps a lot. OK, so we got those. OK, so now I'm going to add my remaining two sides. At first, when I picked this fabric, I was kind of worried about the birds, but then I, when I looked at it, the birds were going all which way, so it didn't matter what, what happened with the birds. But I, I picked it because it had a lot of the colors that I used in my blocks. I was going with more of a solid monochromatic fabric, but then I thought, you know what, I want to pick up those colors, and maybe it'll make my blocks look more like they go together, which I think they do. Okay.
Yeah, so I was telling um, the class earlier today about Thursday, we got a text in that there was a fall right fire in Fallbrook and um, that it's where it started was right close to my address. So I got in my car and I started calling my husband and he didn't get the phone at all. The, his cell phone was down by the time that all happened. And so I, I weaved around and finally I ended up in Temecula and I sat there and just waited and finally he called off the, the land phone because you're supposed to have landlines when you live up in Fallbrook just because it's hard to talk on the cell phones, which is true, as we found out. So I ended up going all the way up past Temecula and going down through this little town called Duluth on this very windy road. And I kind of snuck in the top end of Fallbrook and wove over to my house. And I was not there very long before I turned around and left that house. <laughs> my house is OK. It's just the flames is getting really close. There's a hill to the east of us that I think totally protected the wind flow coming down. And I think, because it didn't really smell smoky, but it looked really smoky. So I figured if I didn't smell it, that was probably good. But they wouldn't let us back in until Monday. And it's a long time. Well, I felt pretty confident because you can kind of see where the fire line's going. But still, still that unknown. But what if the flame goes backwards? Hmm? Yeah, that was weird. But I had tile roof, so that made me feel better, too. OK, so I got those down, so I'm going to press those out. But I totally agree. You know how they tell you you should have a list of what you need to take? We should have had a list, because I took really dumb stuff. Just really dumb stuff. Yeah. But the, the worst part was sitting in the um, hotel room for four days with no machine. I didn't have time to go to my sewing room. I had to evacuate once. So I took one. <laughs> Maybe I should keep one in the front closet. <laughs> OK. So let's look at this ruler. I'm going to be squaring these up to 12 inches. And when I square it up to 12 inches, there's a few things I can look at. I have a diagonal line that's printed. So I would know that that diagonal line is going to go through each corner, right? Because that cause gives you a good perspective there. And after squaring up several of these, I have found out that with <laughs> the 9-inch blocks, this is the 10-inch square up dash line that it snugs and fits in very nicely between my framing border and block. So not only do you have this diagonal line as a good guide, but you also have this square up line. Before you cut anything, you want to make sure, as I remember I said we squared it up to 12, you want to make sure that you have fabric that goes beyond, at least to the edge of your ruler, preferably beyond. And then I'm looking down here at the 12 inch, and I want to make sure that I have fabric that goes beyond that 12 inch. If I make my first cut like here, okay, and trim that off, I don't have enough fabric to reach 12 inches. So make sure your whole area of your finished size is underneath that ruler, OK? I have done that before, too. I've done it all before, so that's good. <laughs> then ho hopefully you won't do that things. OK, so I've just placed it down. I want to give it really good pressure in the middle. Um, I do have Invisigrip on this ruler. Any sort of, they have like those dots work really well, you know, true grip dots. Anything like that can help your ruler stay stable. And I'm just going to go up and across, OK? And I never want to go back to where I can't anyway because my fabric's underneath there. But you always want to be safe, OK? Never cut towards you. So the next time, I'm just going to tilt my ruler, and I'm going to turn this around. This is what I just trimmed off. And now I'm going to place it back down. And where I just trimmed off is going to go right where the 12 inches is, OK? And so I just have little bits on the other two sides. And you'll notice you're not going to be taking the exact same width off of all your blocks, but it's like an optical thing. You'll never know, notice once it's sewn into your quilt. It's going to be pretty close. OK? So is that good? People always ask me about doing a square up. Just getting more for clarification on it, so I thought I'd go through that example with you. OK. So the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to cut up our piece lattice. And what I did, I had a little two inch strip. This is going to be a strip the same size as the framing border of your blocks. And I just sewed background up there. It'll tell you what size for what size blocks you're doing, what size background set you need. And I would do, you're going to do several of these, no matter what size quilt you do. But since I'm just for a purpose of example, I'm just going to cut one apart for tonight. I'm making sure that my selvage underneath, when I cut off up here, I'm going to make sure that I cut off the selvage down there. There's been times when I thought that it's all lined up, you know, and you're down there, you still have white showing or part of your selvage. And you want to get, if you see white, usually that's really densely woven part of your fabric. So you kind of want to get that out of there so you'll have a better chance of it lying flat. Okay, so I know from my size that I'm going to be cutting these into four and a half inch increments. So again, I can just use my 4 by 14. And I'm lining up the edge of my fabric right on the grid line of my mat. So I'm not getting little parallelograms coming out. It's getting like a good rectangle with 90 degree angles. And I'll just trim off the first one. And then I'll go every four and a half inches. And it'll tell you um, exactly what size or how many you need and what size for your size of blocks. So you just get those cut. So you get the idea. So you have these little things. Okay, now we're going to go over to the flannel board and I want to show you how we're going to lay out the blocks. Which is really exciting, right? Oops, I have a funny little pin going there. Okay, so I'll try and go as tall as possible. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be putting those four and a half inch pieces that I just cut with a little stripe in it in between my blocks. But right now, I'm just going to put my blocks out. And if you accidentally sew, you know, the stor short strips to the top or bottom, don't, don't, use, don't really worry about it. It's just maybe a goal try to do. <laughs> But if it doesn't work, that's fine too. So here's my little bird. I had to put a good fussy cut in for you. See, like, so here's my bird and here's my short stipes. And then you guys remember this one, right? Okay, so you're just going to lay your blocks out. Hopefully they're pretty flat. They should be at this point. And then I'm going to take these things and they're going to go between the blocks. And see how that's going to connect them? That's all it is to it. When you look at the quilt, it looks like it could be really complicated. Like, oh my gosh, what is this? But it is so easy to do. Okay, so there's those, and then I'm going to put them between here, too. Okay, so what I have remaining, okay, so that's all my piecework, but I still have these holes. And these are like your cornerstones. So for my cornerstones, what size did I cut my piece lattice? Remember, four and a half? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just cut these four and a half inch squares. And that's just going to complete it. Okay, so you got everything laid out. And I would like take a picture like maybe with your cell phone or something like that s and take back and look at it or, you know, put it on a bed, leave the room, come back. And then you'll be able to see if you have like maybe all your green kind of blocks in one corner. You know how that happens? Mm -hmm. They seem to do that. Anyway, um, when we sew it together, we're just going to take our second column and flip it right sides together to our first column and then open it up and do the same thing with the next column until you have your whole quilt sewn together. And I pressed all of my seams away from these pieces right here. So I pressed it towards my block, which it's going to like because I don't have to press against those seams right there. And then I'm going to press it towards this corner and then everything will totally lock together for you. All right. 
So once that's all done, then we'll add our borders. And that's it. Yay. There you go. Yay. Anyway, thank you all for joining us this year. And we look forward to seeing you in another class sometime. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yay.